What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. Now this is a video that I'm actually really excited for. This is Venomverse Reborn issue number one. And that the way they tell this story it really feels like almost a what if story. And if you've been following my channel, you know that we have been following both the Carnage and Venom titles. It's all been building up to the symbiote war that is inevitably going to take place. Now, we are a couple issues behind on those titles. We will be catching up with them. But the reason I bring up those titles is because this is going to be focusing on the eventuality. The Eddie Brock at the end of all time. What the original Eddie Brock and Venom will always become. That all paths, all roads lead to the eventuality. But what's unique about this comic is almost breaking the fourth wall. It's almost as if the reader is the one that gets to ask the questions. Five questions that Eddie Brock was granted. Us, the reader, is being granted those questions. And the first question, what if Eddie Brock was never Venom? Make sure that you guys have subscribed to the channel. Make sure that you like this video. And with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we pick up with this issue, we pick up at the eventuality. Now we don't know if the eventuality is talking to us or if it is talking to uh, Eddie Brock that made its way here. But like always, you get five questions, but the eventuality can bend these rules. Being sick and tired of answering the same questions all the time, the eventuality is going to give us some freebies. The place that they are in, this is the black engine. The hand before us is the eventuality, aka the king in black, aka Eddie Brock, the original Venom, far future edition. The eventuality is a multiversal entity. It is a multiversal presence, meaning if Eddie Brock lives long enough, stays Venom long enough, all his roads lead directly here. And the first question proposed to the eventuality, what if Eddie Brock isn't Venom? And though he says that this is a very good question, a reasonable one, but if you had kept your eyes around during the King in Black event, if you had focused on not the battle, but what was happening off in the distance, you may have been able to see exactly what that question is, to find out what the answer is. This is what takes us to Manhattan. Earth 1048, where Marvel's Spider-Man video games take place. And we have Venom out here doing what Venom does. But in a blink of an eye, we see this Venom transported to Earth 616 during the King and Black Invasion. And we have the arrival of Null. He is letting Venom know that I am your father. I am your creator and I am your god. Of course, Venom wants to know why he has been brought here. Null tries to convince him that you're here to fulfill your dreams, to help me take over this land, to join my ranks, and be my rightful right hand. And as Venom looks around, he can see that there are similarities. But this is not his dream. This is Null's. That these beings of this world are not your children, they are your slaves. And he will admit that on his his earth. He is depriving those who join him of their free will, but it is only to give them better lives. It is obvious that Noel is seeking control, that they are tools, they are cannon fodder, that your only interest is your own. This is when Noel tells him that maybe you missed the part where I said I was a god, which means I am your god. That he would prefer to be a loving god, but if he must, he will deal out punishments, sending his dragons after Venom. This is where the face is exposed and we see that this, this Venom is Harry Osborn. And if he's gonna take him on, it's gonna take a lot more than some dragons. With Harry putting one of these dragons down, he stands toe to toe with Null. He tells Null that we're not in your universe. You cannot control me. And Harry is beginning to suspect that this is the very reason that Noel brought him here to begin with. 
an enemy attacks Noel through the lines between him and his offspring. They want this Venom because he is different, because he is separate, but he will not be compelled to do anything. Noel telling him that he could strike him down right here. Venom says then do it. That if you're gonna do it, go ahead. Because if you're such the god you say you are, do what gods do. Or are you just a god in this universe? Are there rules that are much larger than you that even you have to follow? What consequences would come with interrupting in worlds that don't belong to you? Consequences you can't afford at this very moment. And though outraged, Noel opens up a portal. He tells Venom to get back to his world, but he tells him to pray. Pray to whoever god you know that he never sets his gaze upon his universe. Because one day if that day ever comes, Noel will decimate all of them. Taking us back to the eventuality, we see the hand but it is also looking very much like Eddie Brock. Taking a form that we actually haven't seen it take before. He says that we are the third person to come in from the Reality 616, but he is here to let us know what if Eddie Brock never met Venom? What if nobody becomes Venom? And to tell this tale, we pick up in a very, very disgusting, grimy world. We see Captain America torn apart. His insides are now his outsides. And as Bruce Banner stands above his body, he has no idea who did this. With Hawkeye and Natasha coming over to him, both of them unable to believe that Captain America is dead, they're still trying to figure out how this happened. The Quinjet had landed about an hour ago. As they go to check the surveillance, according to the log, Steve was coming back from the Arctic. Now, Steve would go up there and kind of just reminisce, give him perspective of his once grave. But when the Quinjet lands, nobody comes out. Banner immediately turns to Natasha. The Captain America is dead and she is the only one that was anywhere near that area. And while things get heated with them, they rush over to Tony Stark, saying that he would be in the lab all night. As they get over closer to his body, they see that something is wrong, that blood is dripping from his suit. With Banner having an override for a just-in-case situation, to be able to open up the suit and when it opens up we have nothing more than a soupy mess of what was once Tony Stark. Now in a fit of rage we see the Hulk come out. Not wanting to believe it but who could take down two of Earth's mightiest heroes if not a god as they rush over to deal with Thor to believe he is the one behind all of this. Upon arriving at Thor, we see that Thor is left in the same condition. Now Banner is starting to think that maybe this is a pathogen. Maybe this is a parasite. Banner's brain goes straight into panic. He begins looking for any kind of clues. This is when Hawkeye pulls up an adamantium arrow, something he has saved specifically for the Hulk. He believes that Banner is responsible, but Banner tries to let them know that all three of them were killed from the inside out. That what else could breach the armor of Iron Man besides something microscopic? What else could kill a god but something invisible? This is where Natasha pulls her pistol and blows out the brains of Hawkeye. And then she heads over to Banner, and everything that is inside of her goes into the Hulk. His vision went black. This is when he saw it all. A meteor falling from the heavens. Captain America going to investigate. Once he got down to the crater, what was inside consumed him, took over. The symbiote made him its own. And after its dormancy in the cold reaches of space, it was starving and lonely. But Steve Rogers just wasn't compatible. He resisted enough that the symbiote consumed and abandoned him. Then it chose someone more familiar with darkness, Natasha. One by one, it consumed and ate all of the heroes. But then it realized its most ideal home was Bruce Banner, a man who knows what it means to incubate a monster. As we are taken back to the eventuality, 
he lets us know that this is what happens when nobody is Venom. Just questing from host to host. Sampling, tasting, moving on to the next more powerful being. And what happens next, nobody wants to know. There are certain realities even the eventuality stays away from. If one of those made it to this level, this is something that he doesn't even want to think about. And then he tells us to ask our next question. That will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I freaking loved this issue. This issue was so dope. Not only does it really give a, a great introduction to the eventuality for people that don't know what the eventuality is, but really this is just the greater cosmos of the Venomverse. In the infinite amount of universes that are out there, universe on top of universe on top of universe, we have seen the outcome of so many of them. This is showing us the outcome of what happens to Venom. Venom, in a world where he is able to take over the Hulk, and we could assume that the world, it really ends up bowing down to him. But imagine if something like that became a multiversal presence. That would be more terrifying than anything Noel could have brought to the table. But it's also fun that we got to see some Noel King in Black here. Anytime I see him, I'm freaking stoked. I'm so excited to see him just come to the table and show us what he's doing. Honestly, I'm just strapped in. I'm ready to see what the heck they can bring to the table next. What are they going to offer us? What other what-if situations are we going to see coming out of the Venomverse? So far, they've knocked it out of the park, and I am excited to see what happens next. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you want to get caught up on everything that has been going on with this series, with Carnage, with Venom, with everything else in between check out the links in my description as well as the top of this video it's gonna get you completely caught up on everything going on with this series if you want to support the channel you can always do so by joining the channel membership much like patreon having multiple different tiers from one dollar to fifty dollars from loyalty badges to comics every single month not only are you helping out the channel tremendously, but you are getting tons of perks in the process. Now, if you're unable to do this, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.